Now uh, that we have these code spaces uh, session going and we've actually launched different code spaces sessions along this course, let's go ahead and break it <laughs> so that you can know what to expect. So I'm going to open the Explorer here. Let's do something to this. Um, how about the Docker file? Let's mess up with the Docker file. So say, for example, uh, I think there was a problem here with uh, running VS Code. So I'm going to make a change here. I um, let's just uh, make uh, this VM path. Uh, this is on purpose. So, but I'm gonna do this. Like, let's say, assume for example, uh, for a second here that you forgot to do that, and uh, and you save that. And yes, I want to rebuild. So I'm gonna rebuild. Uh, yes, that's fine. So we're going to get into trouble here. This is not going to work. Uh, it's going to it's going to bomb out because the the change that I did is going to get me into trouble. So one thing that you can do is definitely click here on view logs and that's going to be uh, you know showing you a lot of output but it's not going to be immediately um, apparent like what's going on and how to solve the problem. So let's let's take a second until it, it hits the problem like the actual problem that I created and uh, let's see what our options are there for debugging. Aha, uh -huh. so container creation failed running recovery container. So step one is that Codespaces is running a recovery container and it's going to connect me to that recovery container. Uh, and we're going to see what are some of our options in this recovery container that we have. So our Codespaces still runs, but uh, things are pretty messed up. So first thing, take advantage of this pop-up and go and look at the creation logs. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to hide the, the, the file explorer and um, a couple of things. So first off, the first thing that you are going to be drawn into is this thing. Don't, don't pay attention to that because this does not have what you need in order to find out what's going on. You will have, most probably will have to scroll up and try to uh, find what's going on. It is not even, not even this one because it's uh, telling you that, you know, that's, you know, it's basically Exico 27. My goodness, <laughs> sometimes these errors are horrible and nothing tells you exactly what you need to know. The actual error is right above it is this uh, snippet right here. Uh, pip, bin pip not found. So that's, that's the ticket right there. So sometimes it doesn't, uh, the error is not, doesn't belong there. It belongs a little bit uh, further up and you might get into trouble. So you will need to scroll, uh, you'll need to scroll down. So, so that's, um, uh, that, that's what happens when you mess up, when you break things. And, uh, and, and this is a way to, to kind of like figure out what's going on. And the recovery container is of course the way to, to do that. And good, good thing that this happens automatically because you don't, you wouldn't want to figure out how to run a recovery container. Uh, when when things are failing, you're going to want to get rid of this problem right away pretty fast and get going. So that's that's the, the tips on, on troubleshooting and making sure that everything's right. Uh, another thing that I would suggest uh, to prevent into these problems is that you should you should try to add a build step onto your uh, container. So I'm going to show you an example repository that has a build step with GitHub Actions. So this is a repository that is uh, actually a template repository, but the, the, the details of the repository don't matter. What matters is uh, the uh, GitHub action configuration. And there's this Docker image one, and I'm going to show you what it is. And it is essentially 18 lines. So <laughs> this is not very complicated. It's just 18 lines. And these 18 lines, what it does is very, very easily. Every time there's a push, it will run docker build um, to the using the file that is in the dev container. So what is this thing doing? Well, anytime there's a pull request to the main branch, it will run this and it will ensure that the pull request is not breaking the docker file. So any changes, if you're trying to prevent changes from breaking, you can uh, use something like this to prevent those uh, from messing up. The trick here is pointing to the dev container docker file. Uh, so that you are making sure that the code space, the, the custom code space will always build correctly.